I'm Story Miller, and this is Dr. Jamie Green at the Presbyterian Church in Harlem. Dr. Green, when was the church founded? Well, the Presbyterian Church uh, was organized in October of 1887 um, after several years of missionary work. Uh, and originally, it was in a building that was located down the street. Uh, this, the current building dates from 1912. One of the interesting things about the Presbyterians in the early days when they first came in is they were really interested in education. So at the same time that they started the church, they also started a school. And this school was located down uh, on down uh, Clover Street uh, where the Community Resource Building is for the Harlan Independent School District. Uh, it was on that site. And a lot of the people uh, who were the leaders of Harlan in the early 20th century uh, got their start by going to school there. It was a private school, and I think it cost a dollar a month to go to school. Uh, but a lot of the people who became leaders went there, and then they were encouraged to go on to college, and a lot of them were helped uh, by the church to find different places to go to college. When was the church building, the current church building, built? Well, as I said, it was, it was built in 1912. Uh, they launched a campaign, and there, there's a lady in Harlem that's got a bunch of letters that. Uh, copies of letters and they wrote people all over. Like people wrote people like Teddy Roosevelt and a number of famous people around the country and they got a lot of donations. Uh, I think they played in effect they were in Appalachia and they didn't have very much money. Um, so the building was, uh, as I said, was built in 1912. The house next door originally was the manse and it was built in the early 1920s. What was the church's early mission? Well in the early days of course one of the, the mission for the church itself uh, was obviously to uh, uh, win people uh, for Christ. And so there was a lot of emphasis on going out and they used to have uh, Sunday schools up and down uh, the different creeks. They had Sunday schools up at Kitts and Golden Ash and a number of other different places around the county up at, and at Kaywood. And they actually, as a result of the work they did at Kaywood, they actually started the Kaywood Presbyterian Church, which is still in existence today. So that was their early uh, their early mission effort. And as I said, the denomination came in and had the school and the church and the school operate together, but they were also independent organizations. What was the community involvement? Well, over the years, the church has been involved in the community in a lot of different ways. Uh, one of the early things, and there's a historical marker outside, um, was the involvement of scouting. And one of the um, members of the church, Will Ward Duffield, was very much interested in working with boys, and, and boy scouting was relatively new and so the Harlan troop was one of the first troops in the South. Uh, there's a debate over whether it was the first, uh, so, but uh, people have argued about that, but it was a very early troop. And for years, uh, you know, scouting has been an important part of this, the life in, of this church, and the church has welcomed the scouts and still does today. Another really important thing that the church was associated with in the 1960s, um, there's this chain of hospitals that were built in the 50s by the United Mine Workers Union and they were called the Miners Memorial Hospitals. And these hospitals became unprofitable to the union. They decided they were going to get rid of them. And they were just going to close them down and there would be no, hosp no hospitals. Uh, and the pastor of this church, Dr. S. McMaster Kerr, got all concerned about this. And so he wrote a letter to uh, somebody at the, na at the national level of Presbyterian denomination and got, got them interested in becoming involved and they actually brokered a deal whereby they created the uh, Appalachian Regional Hospital chain as a nonprofit corporation. And so the church was kind of the mediator in that. And so they saved the hospital chain. So we're, 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 we're proud of the role that we played in that. The pipe organ that is behind us, when was it installed? Okay, the present organ was installed in 1942. Um, when the church was first built, they had a, uh, an organ that was powered by hand. And they had what they called a bellows. And you pumped the bellows while the organist played. And uh, the lady that was the organist back then told me about uh, one Sunday, the, the kid, he was probably about your age, who was supposed to be pumping the organ, went to sleep during the sermon. And so it was kind of a catastrophe. But this organ was, built, was put in in 1942. When the organ uh, was first installed, the, uh, the console, which is the, where the keyboard is, the console is not what makes the, the music, of the, uh, the pipes are what make the music. But the console was actually located here in the choir loft. And then later it was located down on the floor. Uh, in the 1980s, we were advised that it really was getting old and needed to be replaced. So we replaced it with a modern 
uh, console that it's very interesting because it has wood keys because tr traditionally you think of ivory or today plastic keys, but this has wood keys and it. it's a very different kind of feel. Uh, also, another, another interesting thing was that at that same time, one of our members had given us a DX7 synthesizer and so we decided that we would have a shelf built into the organ console so that we could put the synthesizer on that, so, which we still use that. And that, it's amazing that thing's 30 years old, but it really has held up really well. What are the specifications to the pipe organ? Well, this organ has nine ranks uh, of pipes, ranks or sets of pipes. Now, when you say nine ranks of pipes, that doesn't mean they're just nine pipes, because what you see here is just a facade. These are not actual working pipes. The actual working pipes in the organ are in this chamber behind, and the sound comes out at the top, and you can see uh, that there are bellows up there that open, or, or shutters that open, and allow the uh, uh, sound to come out, and it also it impacts the dynamics. But um, there are two manuals to the organ and a pedal board, and the two manuals each have four different uh, sounds that they produce. So we have, a, we have a flute, we have an octave, and we have a diapason, a dulciana, um, a viola, and several different types of sounds. And then, of course, the pedal uh, has two, two different sounds that it produces, which is a bourdon and a flute. And then there's also a set of chimes, although unfortunately uh, they are not working very well at the present because the chimes do not age well and they're uh, really in need of repair. To wrap up, what are the church's favorite uh, hymns? Well, pro the probably, that's hard to say that there's one favorite, but a hymn that I've always associated with this church, when I was a kid, uh, we sang every Sunday morning, we sang Holy, 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 uh, is sort of the opening, uh, we just sang one verse, but we sang it every, so I thought you could not start church if you didn't sing Holy, Holy, Holy. Uh, we don't sing it that often now, but we do sing it. That's one that everybody knows real well. Uh, people like hymns like, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, Come Thou Found of Every Blessing, um, um, You Servants of God, Your Master Proclaim, uh, O Worship the King, uh, Come Thou Almighty King, some of the, the ones that are real, uh, the older hymns, they, they particularly like those.